before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. Oh Lord, transform me. Change my heart completely to be more like you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come into your holy presence this morning. We seek your Holy Spirit guidance and we pray that you may be it, your man servant, granting your wisdom, the ability to speak with clarity so that the listeners will hear and we give your thanks and praise for what will happen today in Jesus' name. Amen. Has anybody ever asked you this question? If God is so good, why is the world so bad? If there is a God, why are children starving in India? If there is a God, why should a baby be born with HIV? There are three answers to this. One, what we see in our world, the suffering in our world, is the corporate result of a sinful world we live in. Two, when you go through suffering and you are treated unjustly, and unfairly, God is always there by your side to give you strength and courage. He has not left you alone. Third, to, we may suffer for a little while in this life, but God is going to set all things right. And that at the end of time, there will be no more soul, sickness, or death, or suffering. The name Daniel, as we said before, refers to the God of justice and judgment. Now we begin with Daniel chapter 1. In the first chapter, we have the introduction of the great controversy there. The mystery that unlocks all the entire Bible. Once you understand that your whole mind becomes enlightened. In the treasure building in Washington, D.C., there are, there, there are 1,800 doors. There is one master key that unlocks all the entire doors. One key is a mystery that unlocks the Bible. All of the Bible. If you understand this text, if you understand the teaching of the Bible, is that God created a perfect world and is no responsible for evil. He gave every one of his creatures the ability to choose and that Lucifer rebelled against God. 
a rebel angel and that this world is in the midst of a great controversy between good and evil. When our first parents fell, they opened the door God wanted forever closed. You look at the Bible through the eye of the great controversy. You look at the Bible through the conflict between good and evil in Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Yes, he besieged it. 2 Kings 24 1 says the same thing. So you have two kings, Jehoiakim and Nebuchadnezzar. You have two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. Jerusalem represents all that's right, and that was true. It represented goodness and greatness. It represented the people of God, the truth of God. It represented the city of righteousness. The city in which men and women worship the true God. Babylon is a city against the principles of God. It was filled with idolatry. So in the third year of Jehoiakim, 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar attacks Jerusalem. He attacked Jerusalem three times. Three times. And it is said that Daniel was about 17 years old. 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem. Three separate times, 605 BC, 596 BC, and 578 BC. The first time he attacks Jerusalem in 605, he takes Daniel captive with some men, that's brilliant young men also. The second time he attacks Jerusalem in 596 BC, he takes 10,000 captives with him. The third time he attacks Jerusalem, he wipes up Jerusalem completely off the map. Why does Nebuchadnezzar attack Jerusalem? Look at the position of Babylon on a map of the Medes. You see Babylon is in the north and Egypt is down in the south. And so Je Jehoiakim, king of Israel, signed a treaty with Egypt in the south to protect him. This made Nebuchadnezzar extremely angry. So he attacked the king in Jerusalem. And the same way he attacked him, his father Nabo Polosal died. In August 15, when Nebuchadnezzar realized that his father died, he quickly went back to Babylon by another route. And he arrived there on September 15 to claim the throne of the empire before Daniel arrived. Now, in Daniel 1, we see the controversy continues, evils triumph over righteousness. And Daniel arrived there three months after. So evil... Evil continues to be in conflict with righteousness. And Daniel and the larger group of people took two months to get back. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem, as the account says, and Babylon is the city of lies, immorality, lawlessness. How can a city like Babylon Capture God's city. How can the Lord permit Babylon to capture his city? Nebuchadnezzar to do so. And the Lord's name given is Adonai, meaning God is still in control. So a God who is still in control permits Jerusalem to be captured by Nebuchadnezzar. God allows this to happen. And you know, there are times that God allows things to happen that you may not see and understand. Nebuchadnezzar invades the temple at Jerusalem. He takes the lighted candlestick, the Shekinah glory of God, and he puts them in the house of his God at Shinai. Let's look at Daniel chapter 1 and verse 2 to see what he does. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim of Judah into his hand. So God gave the king into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinai, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And now we understand, after he has taken the lighted candlestick, the Shekinah glory, he places them in the house of his God at Shinai, in Daniel 1-2. James Russell Lowell puts it in a beautiful way. Truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet the scaffold sways the future beyond the dim unknown. 
standards, God weeping, watching above his own. Nebuchadnezzar attacks Jerusalem and overthrows it, yet God is forever on the throne watching it. Daniel is taken captive in Daniel 1 4. Children in whom was no blemish. These are the, the children of Nebuchadnezzar took captive. Children with no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the, the learning and the tongue of the Chaldean. He is taken as a teenager. The word that gives me the information, knowledge that he's a teenager or he's an adolescent is the word Yeladim. The Hebrew word Yeladim, meaning adolescent, somebody between the age of 15 to 18. Now he had to be educated in the language of the Chaldeans. But what are the language of the Chaldeans? The Chaldeans had three different types of languages. They had the Akkadian language, which was the language of the king's court. Then they had the Sumerian language, which was the common language of the people. And then they had the Aramic language, or the language of the scholarly or the scholars. So what did Daniel learn in the University of Babylon? He learned maths, he learned algebra, he learned quantum physics, he learned architecture, he learned medical science, he learned astronomy, and he learned the occult arts of Babylon. That's what they taught in the University of Babylon. So imagine Daniel arriving as a captive and marching into the splendor, the wealth, and the opulence of Babylon. He is marched into the city of Babylon to be ridiculed, to face defeat by the Babylonian gods, to hear the people telling him, oh, your name Daniel? Oh, what do you do with that name Daniel? You say Daniel means God is my judge? But look where you are. Look where you are today. You are captured by our gods. So his name Daniel was changed to Belteshazzar. Keeper of the hid treasure of Bel. Daniel, forget who you are, they are saying to him. Forget about your past. Daniel, you are in Babylon now. Forget about your Jewishness. Forget who you are. You are going to be the keeper of the hid treasures of Bel. So forget about being Daniel anymore. You are going to serve in a pagan temple. Forget about being Daniel and forget about your God anymore. And then they come to Hananiah, the, 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 the other boy's name. Hananah means the Lord is gracious unto me. Translated in Aramic, it means that. In the language of the, in the, language of the Aramic, he was given the name Shaj, Shajak. Shajak means worship of his son. And Mishael, which means God-like, was called Mishak in the Aramic, meaning servant of the goddess Sheba. And Azariah, which in the Hebrew language meant the Lord is my helper, was called Abedne, Abednego, Abednego, servant of Sheba. Now they received these name changes to shape their minds, to shape their character as it were, to shape their minds, to shape their character. Now in our culture today, if you immerse your minds in the movies, culture, violence, entertainment, you will not have a mind for spiritual things. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, By beholding you become changed. Whatever you look at too long, whatever you ape or you copy, or you permit to control or to influence your mind, eventually you become just like that. If you lose the battle for the mind, you lose the battle for the soul. What shapes our thinking process? What shapes deep down inside of us? What we put in our minds. If we put immorality in our minds, we'll shape our minds just like that with immorality. In Daniel 1, 17 we are told, As for these four God children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. You see, friends, within the citadel of his being, Daniel purposes to serve God. Are you doing that within the citadel of your being? If you are tempted to cheat or steal, you have to make a decision. Sometimes you may be invited to a birthday party 
and the, the wine is flowing, the drinks is flowing, you have to decide whether you'll take the drink or not, whether you'll take the wine or not. Or sometimes they are making lewd jokes, dirty jokes, and you have to decide whether you are going to engage in the dirty jokes or not. It's all decided in, in your mind. You know, I remember when I was in school, I used to study with my other Form 5 colleagues. And sometimes we study midnight up to midnight, or we study up to 2 in the morning. And there are times when we finish studying, sometimes in an evening, and we sit next to the cinema. And they'll be chatting and talking, they'll be engaging, smoking, they might want a cigarette, some of them will be drinking, and I'll be standing right there with them as they participated. And you know, they will say, but you know, he's with us, we are doing all these things and he isn't participating in it. You have to decide in your heart, in your mind, what you want to do. Let's look at the book of Proverbs chapter 4, 23 to show you how our minds need to be guided. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. And Proverbs 4, 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. Careful with your heart, with your mind. Keep your heart with all diligence. For all of it are the issues of life. What you think, what you plan, how you react, all comes from your mind. So you have to keep your mind alert. You have to keep your heart alert. Do you remember Isaac Watts, the great hymn writer? You know, Isaac Watts wrote most of the hymns that we sing today. And some of the hymnals. One day he was being honored in London, riding in Harley Street, which is the number one street in England. He was driven the horse John carriage, while thousands waved all over the way from the balconies on the streets they waved. And this shriveled old man was five feet one inches in height. A woman standing from a balcony way up shouted, What is this, Isaac? What? This little old man? He stood up with his five feet one, tall and elegant, and said, "'Tis true my form is old, but blaming me is blaming God. Could I create myself anew, I would not fail in pleasing you. If I could reach from pole to pole or grasp the ocean with a span, I would be measured by the soul, the mind, the standard of the man." And I tell you this morning, the mind is the standard of the man. The mind, what you put in your mind determines who you are and what you will be forever. Who are you? We are that which we are inside. Yes, we are that which we are inside. We are that which we choose to be. Because Proverbs 423 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, 23 verse 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As we think, so we are. Whatever we put in our mind, the thought patterns we put there, that's what comes out in our life. We change our minds by putting positive things into our minds. Have you considered the purpose of your life? Have you personally made a decision, a very fundamental decision, that the goal of your life is to please God? Anything not in harmony with the will of God, you consciously choose not to do? That if you are personally convicted that this is not in harmony with God, will you say, God, I'm not going to go down that pathway? Why did Daniel not eat that meat that was given to him in Daniel chapter 1? I'll tell you there are three reasons, and it's very interesting to hear about them. One, it was offered to idols. Two, it was unclean. Three, it was not slaughtered with the blood drained according to the health laws of the Hebrews. So he preferred a plant-based diet using zeroim. What is zeroim? Zeroim is the Hebrew word for grains, nuts like cashew nuts, root crops like cassava, and vegetables. Zeroim. Grains, nuts, fruits, vegetables. The diet you eat affects your heart and helps build brain cells. Did you know that? The diet you eat affects your heart and helps build brain cells. Now, there's a lot of cutting edge research these days on Alzheimer's disease. It shows the danger of Alzheimer's and what is being done to handle the power of Alzheimer's disease. 
And if you want to reduce Alzheimer's disease in your life or somebody's life, you got to urge them to use a plant-based diet. Whereas, for example, higher fat and sugar increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease, a plant-based diet reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease. And you can reduce the risk by using a plant-based diet. Daniel knew that a rich diet of fat, sugar, reduces his grade. He was a student. He knew that too much fat and sugar would reduce his grade and reduce his ability to think sharp. You see, he wanted to make A's all the time. He wanted to be on, on Nebuchadnezzar's list. Dr. Melvin Nisa, a well-known professor at the University of South Carolina, developed an electronic microscope. And he, looked, he used that electronic microscope to look at the agglutination. Yes, the agglutination of blood vessels carrying blood to the brains. You see, white blood cells and red blood cells are in our bodies. The white blood cells create immunity. The white blood cells create immunity. Whereas the red blood cells are the oxygenated cells carrying blood to the brain. The white blood cells create immunity and the red blood cells are the oxygenated cells carrying blood to the brain. The high concentration of alcohol make the blood vessels clump together within the cells. So what Dr. Lisa did, he made students drink alcohol one night before. The next morning they were brought to his class. He had no idea how much they drank because he sent them all around within the hotel to take different rooms to do their drinking and so on. He placed them on the table in his classroom. He looked into their eyes with his electronic microscope and he said to them, just looking at the electronic microscope, he said to them, you drank two beers, you drank three beers, you drank four beers, you drank six beers. That was based on something he noticed called the oxygen deprivation, yes, the oxygen deprivation of the brain. Because the brain was deprived of oxygen, he knew how much alcohol they had drunk. And the sticking together or agglutination of the red blood cells. So he knew that because of the oxygen deprivation of the brain, and it's sticking together or uh, agglutination of the red blood vessels. Daniel knew that a plant-based diet will keep his brain sharp and on the cutting edge. And the Bible tells us in Daniel 1.16, this is what he, he, he did. Daniel 1.16. Thus Melza took away the portion of the meat and the wine they would they should drink and give them pulse. And that's where we get the Hebrew word Zerurim referring to grains, vegetables, and nuts. You see, you can only move forward when the negative is taken away. Only when the negative is taken away can move forward. If you maintain and sustain the negative, you will never move forward. And in Daniel 1.14, look what happened. In Daniel 1.14, we are told, so he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. Have you ever heard about the Daniel plan that? Daniel plan that is a very interesting plan. We do what we can and God does what he can. Every desire for good is spawned by the Holy Spirit. When you begin to serve God, you cannot continue the same old lifestyle. And that's why in verse 17, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and understanding. Okay. Now here you can receive God's blessing quickly. One, determine to please God. Two, allow God to take away the ups, all the obstacles, not in harmony with him like in Daniel 1, 19 to 21. God blessed them because all the obstacles are taken away. And Nebuchadnezzar himself came and he examined the guys. And he saw, after he examined them, that they got grade A. These guys did very well because of, the, because of the fact that they followed God's plan. I believe God wants to bless you, young or old. When we purpose in our hearts to serve God, he blesses us. Nebuchadnezzar reign, even Merodach reign, Nabonidus reign, Belshazzar reign, Darius reign, all these kings reigned and died, but Daniel continued to reign with integrity and stolen character. Jerusalem was captured and conquered at the beginning, but God wins and conquers at the end. God's gained a glorious victory. God always wins, he's the winner. Nebuchadnezzar had glass, but Daniel continued to reign. He reigned and died 
Darius reigned and died, but Daniel continues to win. Today, my good friends, we need men of integrity like Daniel. We need men who will not be bought or sold. We need men whose character will stand though the heavens fall. I want to be like Daniel. I want you to be like Daniel. Let us pray this morning and so that God could help us to be like Daniel. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise this morning. There is great controversy is continuing, but in spite of that, you, oh God, you are the centerpiece of everything. You are directing everything that happens. And you can help us to be positive like Daniel, to take a diet like Daniel, to put, that, to put God first in our lives, to set our minds and our hearts on thinking like Daniel did, and developing a character like Daniel so that he can be more and more like Jesus. Heavenly Father, we know you like us to be like Jesus. May we make the decision this morning to be like Jesus, to be like Daniel, and to let you direct our entire lives, we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm 